And we're gonna, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. I want to pause on that this week for a few minutes and, and talk to you about Thanksgiving because this is the most wonderful time of the year. I like Christmas, but Thanksgiving is the best. The, the, a, whole, a whole holiday built around eating. It's terrific. It's my favorite. And, uh, but I, 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 love, I love it, and I also I love it for a spiritual reason. I feel like this, is, this should be not just a day. This needs to be our life. Living in Thanksgiving. I believe, I believe there's a lot of people, there's a lot of Christians that are struggling with things they shouldn't be struggling with simply because they haven't figured this out. This attitude, this lifestyle of giving thanks to God. This attitude of giving thanks in everything, in every season, no matter what you're going through. I believe this is, this is what, what uh, allows us to receive everything from God is our attitude, having an attitude, a heart of thanksgiving. And I wanna talk about this a little bit today. And if you, I'm gonna start here, Philippians chapter three. And he talks about some things in Philippians and, and we'll look at 1 Thessalonians two in a minute. He talks about thanksgiving, but he does it in, in a roundabout way here. And he starts off in Philippians three, in verse one, he says, finally, brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write you again about this is no trouble for me and is a protection for you. I want you to get this this morning because what he's about to say and this word, this word he told them rejoice and everything he's about to say in these next uh, several verses has to do with their protection. Rejoice in the Lord and it's your protection. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Your, your attitude of rejoicing, and he talks about Thanksgiving here in a minute and some of this other stuff, this attitude that you have in you is for your protection. Why is that? Because there's an enemy who wants to steal, who wants to kill, who wants to destroy your life, everything you hold dear, he wants to crush you. Now listen, Greg said something terrific today that he's already defeated. The enemy has been brought to naught. That means he's, he's, he's been squished. There's nothing left, but if you give in, isn't that what Greg said? You give in, you give up, he can, he can run you over. Now listen, you get the wrong heart in you. You get the wrong attitude in you. You get the wrong thoughts in, in here. And, it's, and it works its way down here. You are leaving yourself open to every attack of the enemy. So that's why he says, you stay in this attitude of rejoicing. He says it in chapter four, rejoice always. Because if I'm in the right attitude, that's for my, he says it's for my protection. Your attitude of rejoicing is for your protection. I've been reading this book. It's a terrific book by a guy named Dan Peterson. And he is the guy who founded the, the school, uh, Top Gun. Remember the movie with Tom Cruise? He, he founded this school back in the, I don't know what year it was, back in the 60s or just, no, sorry, just after Vietnam or during the Vietnam War era. He started the school, Top Gun. And I've been reading about his story. And he said what happened was when he was coming in to the Navy and being trained as a fighter pilot, it was a transition of errors. And he said, he said during World War II, these Navy pilots were taught how to get into dogfights. You know what I mean? They'd get in there and they'd wrestle with the other planes, shooting at each other and all this, trying to shoot them down. He said, when he came up, it was a new era. He said, they told him the day of the dogfight is done. Now we have advanced technology. And now we're going to load missiles on your planes. You won't even be able to see the planes. You just, you'll see them on your radar, push a button and they'll blow up. You won't need the dogfight anymore. And so then Vietnam happened and they got up there. See, they had been training for years and years with no war and they had missiles loaded on these planes, but the missiles were so expensive. They never shot the missiles during training. They would shoot dummy missiles. And so when it, when the time came to go to war, he said, they took all the, the cannons, the guns off of the plane. So they no longer could shoot at the enemy, they would just push the button for the missile. And they got up there and they would see the enemy and to, they would go to engage and they would push the button and the missile would shoot and it would fall to the ground or it would misfire and go this way. And the missiles didn't work like they thought 
they would because they'd never been tested. And so he said, there we were in the air with no defense. We were up in the air defenseless against the enemy and pilot after pilot was being shot down at incredible rates. They had not expected that. And so listen, here's the point. It's terrible to be defenseless. It's terrible to be defenseless. And a lot of Christians are walking around defenseless. They're walking through life and the enemy comes against them and they don't know what to do. What am I supposed to, I'm defenseless. No, you're not defenseless. See, here's the problem though. They think something happens and Christians, and, and I'm talking to Christians for a minute. Christians say, why is this happening to me? Why is this? Lord, why would you let this happen to me? He gave you your defense and you're not using it. He gave you everything you need to protect yourself and you're not using it. So here's what I want you to catch this morning. He says, rejoice in the Lord. And so I want to talk to you about this word, rejoice in the Lord for just a minute. And I'm going to talk to you about Thanksgiving as well. But rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice this. And I mentioned this, I think, last week, just briefly in passing. The word rejoice, what it literally means in the, in the original language, it means be happy. See, sometimes we, we take these words like rejoice and we don't really understand what he's saying. So he says, rejoice in the Lord. And we, don't, we say, oh, that's nice. I don't know what that means. Smile during worship or something. That's not what that means. It means you can be happy. In the Lord, it means, listen, it literally means a calm happiness, a calm happiness. You know, sometimes there's things in life that get you worked up. You know what I'm saying? You sit in traffic for a little bit and suddenly some of y'all get worked up. And some of you, it doesn't take much to get worked up. I'm like that, you put me in a line somewhere in a grocery store and suddenly I'm like, what's the, what is, what is the problem? Why are they taking so long? What's wrong with the, you know, and you start getting worked up. I don't, I just keep me out of stores. I went to a store with my parents wanted to take my kids out to buy some ornaments yesterday. I thought, what is the hold up in this place? But they were shopping. They were looking, well, what about this one? What about, I said, come on, it's time to go. I want to get home. It's nap time. It's nap time. I know my wife hates taking me shopping because I don't like being in there. But some of you, it doesn't take much to get you worked up. And you get into this attitude of, of not being happy. You get into an attitude of anxiety. You get into an attitude of frustration. You get into anger. You get into all kinds of other things. But what does he tell you to do? Rejoice in the Lord. And look at verse 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. How often is that? All the time. Come on. I don't feel like rejoicing all the time. It doesn't matter. Oh, but this guy said this and he got me so mad. No, no, no. Rejoice in the Lord. But you don't work with the people I work with. I don't care. Rejoice always in the Lord. Now, listen, that's not being stupid, you know, like walking around with a grin on your face like you don't know what's going on. It's saying what's going on around me does not affect my joy because the world didn't give it. Come on, you know that song? And the world can't take it away. Amen. What the world didn't give me, the world, the world can't change it because it didn't come from them. It came from him. Amen. I thought that was good. Amen. You got to get your attitude. See, look, the enemy is looking for an open door. He's looking for a target, right? He's looking for some way he can, he can sink his arrow into you. All he needs is a little opening. You got to get yourself to where you got the attitude of rejoicing in the Lord. I don't care what things look like. I don't care what, I don't care what it, see, because here's the thing. You get in the wrong attitude and suddenly you start, you start talking like the devil. You start thinking like the devil thinks. You start speaking words like because you're angry and because you're frustrated. And suddenly you've let yourself be wide open for whatever attack he wants to send against you. And then there you are crying and whining. God, why'd you let this happen to me? 
You get, your, you get yourself in rejoicing at your, what does it say? For your protection. You are not defenseless. You just got to get the right attitude. You know, astronauts, I'm, I'm giving you some science lesson now. Astronauts, when they go, they go into outer space and they get up there. Do you know when astronauts are in space, if there's two of them out there, the guy can't say, hey, hey, Joe, look up. Which way is that when you're in space? There is no, isn't that crazy? There is no up or down. Which way is, which way is north? There's no north. You can't, you got to have a different set of directions. So what they do, they have this thing called attitude. And attitude has to do with what direction you're facing. So you might be, you know, where you, you're, the moon is in full view. So you say, I am, my attitude is set to the moon. And if they get off a little bit and they're working on something that they might, the mission control might say, hey, adjust your attitude. He says, okay, shh, you know, now he's facing the moon again. He's got his attitude adjusted. This is great because I want you to remember this. Your attitude should be fixed on Jesus Christ. Your attitude should be fixed on him. So when something tries to get you focused in another direction, you know, you went to the doctor. No, 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 no. Let me, let me fix my attitude here for a minute. You're sitting in, you're sitting in traffic. Ah, let me fix my attitude for a minute. You've got whatever it is going on. You got to fix your attitude on him. Amen. Fix your eyes on Jesus and you'll have the right attitude. Come on. So rejoice in the Lord. Look at this for a minute. Verse four, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. He's telling you this is for your protection. He says it three times here in these, in these few verses. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Do you think this is something we need to get a hold of? Yes. Rejoice in the Lord. Listen, in this season that you're in, in this, in this season called 2020, um, it's easy to get your attitude on something else. It's easy to start looking at, I mean, my gosh, the election. Now let me fix my attitude. You know, I, it's not that I'm not concerned about what's going on in the world, but let me fix my attitude on Jesus. It's my perspective. You know, I get my attitude on on, I got to go. What do you mean? I got to get a COVID test to drive into a different state. I thought this was America. Let me, let me fix my attitude. You know, I, I can get, I can get upset now, but let me fix my attitude and I'll keep it right. I'll rejoice in the Lord because it's for my protection. Cause I don't want to open myself up to the enemy. So look what he says here. Look at verse five, let your graciousness be known to everybody, the Lord's near. Come on, get, hey guys, get your attitude right. Start treating people full of grace because God, he's, he's coming. He's near. He's coming soon. He's coming real soon. Get yourself right. Stop looking at this. Stop worrying about that. Stop fooling with this thing. Get yourself right. Get your attitude right. He's coming soon. I mean, he's, I mean, he's standing up. He's putting his shoes on right now. He's, re he's getting ready to go. He's getting ready to walk out the door of heaven and come on down here. So you better get yourself right. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So he says, the Lord's near. Don't worry about anything. You need to say this. You need to, this, is, this, is, this is training for our lives here. You need to hear this for your life. Don't you worry. Don't you worry about anything. Amen. Every little thing's going to be all right. Somebody should write a song like that. Don't worry about a thing. Listen, he says, don't worry about anything. Because listen, if we start getting, we, I look at what's going on in the world. Man, I'm going to get worried. It's going to get me worried, but I'm looking at the wrong thing. If I keep my attitude on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Come on. Amen. Don't worry about anything. 
And so here's the thing. Sometimes, I, sometimes you get worried. What do you do? What do you do? You start worrying about stuff. And you know what worry does? Worry just creates more worry. Anxiety just creates more anxiety. Now I'm anxious because I'm anxious. I'm worried because I'm worried. I don't even remember what I'm worried. I'm just worried. It's the opposite of being happy. I cannot be physically be happy if I'm worried. It's impossible. But you know what else is impossible? It's impossible to be worried when you're happy. Oh, it's impossible to get worried. It's impossible to be anxious if I'm happy. So how do I get happy? Let me tell you, here's what he says. Don't worry, but in everything, through prayer and petition, with thanksgiving. There's that thanksgiving. You knew it was coming. Let your request be made known to God. So if, something, if something's got you worried, what do you do? Pray. Now listen, here's the thing I want you to catch. See, sometimes we, we treat prayer the wrong way. We treat prayer like it's a, it's a whining and complaining. God, let me tell you, God, let me tell you how bad it is down here. You don't even know. You don't even know how bad it is to live with my kids. It's just, Lord, it's just terrible. Why would you do this to me, God? Lord, you don't know how bad it is to do, you know, and we just, we just complain. God, let me just complain for a while. And that's our prayer time. That's not, that's not prayer. Prayer is not whining. Prayer is not complaining. Your prayers, the word of God says, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man is powerful yes. and effective. Your prayers are meant to do something. Jesus said you can have whatever you ask for in his name. Amen. Your prayers are powerful because here's what you got to get. If you're anxious, if you're worried about something, what should I do? I should pray. Why? Because God's going to do whatever I ask. He'll do it. See, that's, that's the difference of faith. It takes faith. It takes faith to, be, to rejoice always. It takes faith to believe that God's going to do what he said he would do. So when I pray, I'm anxious, I'm worried. Lord, I'm going to turn this over to you. I'm going to cast all of my cares on you. Why? Because he cares for me. So I'm going to cast my cares on him. You might be going through something. You might have a situation in your family. You might have something and it's, and it's just making you crazy and you lay down at night and you try to go to sleep and all you can do is think about this thing. Listen, cast your care on him. Amen. It might be something with your health and all you can do is think about this thing. There's something, Lord, there's something. I don't know what to do. It's just something. It's, I... No, cast your care on him. Pray the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. It does something. It's powerful. So pray. And then he throws that word in there with thanksgiving. Let your, so, so he says, pray, petition with thanksgiving. Let your request be known. Now, I mentioned this on Wednesday. I said I grew up in a, in a home where this was normal to pray with thanksgiving. Right? So when we pray, Lord, thank you. You know, somebody, somebody is, has a need. Lord, thank you that they're healed in the name of Jesus. That's just how we, that's how we prayed, wasn't it? And I remember one time I was, I was at a, uh, a function. There was a group of people from a different, um, you know, more, more mainstream possibly denomination. And um, they, they, some reason they asked me to pray. I was young. I was in high school. And they said, hey, pray because so-and-so is going on a trip. Pray for them. I said, okay. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful trip. I thank you that there's, you know, they had safety and all, whatever I said. And they looked at me afterward and they said, y you must have misunderstood. They're going on the trip. They haven't gone yet. I said, what do you mean? I didn't understand what they were telling me. We didn't understand each other. They said, no, they haven't gone yet. You were praying like they'd already gone. I said, I was. I didn't know I did that. But that's how, that, that was crazy to them. But that's how I was taught to pray. Why? Because I'm thankful that God's already made me a promise that he'll never leave me or forsake me. I'm thankful that he made me a promise in his word that he said he'll watch over my footsteps. I'm thankful for the promises that he's given me. So, Lord, I'm thankful for your word. That your word is so if somebody's got a need. That's how we pray. Lord, I thank you that your word, you provided everything for us. 
I thank you that you've already done it. See, listen, we got we to gotta become thankful. We got to learn how to pray with thanksgiving. We got to learn how to live with attitudes of thanksgiving. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, can you put that up there? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He says, first of all, he puts these three things together. Rejoice always. You know this scripture. What's the next one? Pray constantly. That's a better verse to me. Those kids that want to memorize Jesus wept. No, how about pray constantly? Come on. And uh, what's the next one? Give thanks in everything for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. He puts those together. Rejoice. Pray. Give thanks. We got to learn how to, he says, give thanks in everything. It doesn't mean for everything. Oh, Lord, thank you that sister so-and-so is dead. No. Well, thank you, Lord, she's with you. You know, I can find something to be thankful for. I want to give thanks in everything. In every situation, I can give thanks. Lord, we thank you for your word. We got to learn how to be thankful for everything God's done for us. And listen, this is so important because this is, this is something that will change your life if you can get a hold of it, to walk in thanksgiving. The word thankful in the, in the Hebrew, it has to do, it's the same word for shooting an arrow at a target. So if you were to shoot an arrow at the target, it's the same word for being thankful. Here's the thing, thanksgiving needs to be specific. It needs to be aimed directly at a target. Because sometimes we do this. We walk around, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. That's so nice, but what are we saying? Well, we're saying thank you. For what? I don't know. You know, if my kids walk around all day long, thank you, Daddy, thank you, Daddy, thank you, Daddy. Daddy, thank you, thank you, Daddy, thank you, Daddy. Uh, uh, well, that's kind, but I think there's something wrong with your head. It doesn't make sense what you're doing. And sometimes that's how we, well, uh, yeah, I'm thankful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. What are you thankful for? I don't know. There's so, got to be something. Be, be specific. Lord, I thank you for what you've done in my family. I thank you for this situation, Lord, that you've got this under control. I thank you in everything. I'm giving you thanks. Amen. See, there, there's a, oh man, I'm getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. There's a, there's a story about a, a salesman. Because see, sometimes this is, the, this is the thing with going back to worry. Let me say this, going back to worry. Sometimes we worry about things we shouldn't. We worry about things we really shouldn't be worrying about. We think about, we start creating problems. You ever done that? You start thinking about something, you start getting worried, you start getting anxious and you start creating this problem. And I heard this story about a salesman. He was driving down the road one night and he got a flat tire. He went to change his tire and he found out he did not have a tire iron. And he thought, oh man, what am I gonna do? And he remembered seeing a farmhouse about a mile back. It's late, it's the middle of the night and now it's begun to rain. He's walking to that farmhouse in the rain in the middle of the night. He starts imagining what's going to happen. He thinks, man, when I get to that farmhouse, that farmer is going to be so mad because I'm going to wake him up in the middle of the night. I bet he doesn't, he, I bet he doesn't even want to get out of bed. I bet he won't even get out of bed. I bet he won't even want to help me. I bet he'll scream from the window and start hollering things at me and start cussing at me. And, you know, he's so angry that I'm knocking at his door. He finally got to the door. All these thoughts were going through his head. He was so angry by the time he got there. He knocked on the door. The farmer, the farmer opens his window, says, who's out there? And the salesman says, you know darn well who it is, and I don't want your help. If you were, if you were the last man on earth, I wouldn't accept your He was so mad. But he created a situation that never happened. And sometimes we do that in our minds. We create problems. We start thinking about people. We start getting our minds on the wrong things. We got to adjust our attitudes and start thinking about him. Start thinking about Jesus. Start getting our minds, our attitudes adjusted to think like he thinks. Because the enemy wants to attack your mind. If he can get you out of anxiety, out of, out of uh, thanksgiving, out of rejoicing, out of walking in prayer, he can get you into that anxiety, into that worry, thinking about the things you shouldn't be thinking about. So keep your thoughts focused on him. Amen. So he says, rejoice always, pray constantly in everything, give thanks. These things go together. 
These things go together so much. You got to learn to walk in these things. Israel never learned this, did they? Walking through all the miracles that they saw. They, were, they walked through the Red Sea. They, they saw God strike the Egyptians with all kinds of plagues. They saw all the miracles of, of God. And here they are in the, in the desert. And what did they do? Constantly complaining. Constantly. God, why don't we have any water? God, why don't we have, have any food? Well, you gave us food, but we don't have any meat. God, why don't, what about this? And what about that? And they just complain. Complaining gets you out of where you're supposed to be. You're now, you're not walking in thanksgiving. Look at what he says over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And verse six, he says, these things became examples for us. What they did in, in Egypt, coming out of Egypt, in the wilderness, they became examples so that we won't desire evil things like they did. He starts going through this list. They desired evil things. What's the next one? They became, he says, don't become idolaters like some of them did because they got up to eat and drink and got up to play. What's the next one? Don't commit sexual immorality like some of them did. So you see these lists, evil things, sexual immorality, idolatry. What's the next one? Don't tempt Christ like some of them did. And they were destroyed by snakes in the next one. Nor should we complain like some of them did and they were killed by the destroyer. This, this always has struck me so crazy that in this, in this list of things that Israel was, was punished for, idolatry, sexual immorality, all kinds of desiring evil things, and in the list is complaining. In the list is their attitude, adjustment. They never made it. They never focused on what God had done for them and being thankful and said they were always complaining. So you can live life like that. I've, you maybe have known some people that li live life like that. Are you yelling at me up there? Okay, no, he's not yelling at somebody else. You can live like life in an attitude of complaining or you can live life from an attitude of thanksgiving, but you make the choice. How are you going to live? You know, if you've ever been around a complainer, you know it's no fun for anybody. You make the choice to live in thanksgiving. I don't care, and I don't want to say I don't care, but it doesn't matter what's been done to you. It doesn't matter what you've been through. You change your attitude and it'll change your life. You change your, your attitude to be focused on him. You get into rejoicing. You get into this thing we call thanksgiving. You get into that attitude of praying. If I'm facing something, I pray and I release it with thanksgiving and it's gonna change your life. Why? Because it's for your protection. It's for your protection. He said all those things in there, rejoicing. You're not, not worrying, prayer and petition with thanksgiving. This is for your protection. And he keeps going here back in Philippians chapter four. Let me continue this. He says in verse seven, and the peace of God, Somebody say peace. The, anybody need peace today? The peace of God, which goes way beyond, surpasses every thought, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. The peace of God is greater than your thoughts. If you'll get your, if you'll get your heart right and your heart fixed on him, when the thoughts come, when the, when the worry comes, when the, the thoughts of anxiety, because that's what the devil wants to bring into your life. He wants to attack you with thoughts of anxiety, thoughts of worry, thoughts of doubt, thoughts of fear. When those thoughts come, the peace of God, which is greater than every thought, is going to keep your heart and your mind safe. It's going to protect you if you're doing what you're supposed to do. If you're continuing in that attitude of thanksgiving, if you're continuing that attitude of rejoicing, you can be happy. Put on a smile today. You can be happy in the Lord. It doesn't matter what's going on. You can be happy if you'll keep that. The peace of God will keep your heart. Oh, but I just want to get, no, just get your attitude right. He says it's greater than every thought. It's going to guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. You need a guard over your mind. You need a guard over your heart. And it's the peace of God, of God that's going to guard you. But you got to do You got to do what you're supposed to do. So he says this, finally, brothers, whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's just, 
whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any moral excellence, if there's any praise, dwell on these things. See, I, get, I can sometimes get my mind off into things I shouldn't be thinking about, but that peace of God's gonna guard me. And when I get my mind going the wrong way, see, the devil wants to come. He wants to bring those thoughts. He wants to, because if he can get me thinking wrong, he'll get me talking wrong. If he can get me talking wrong, he can do whatever he wants to to me. But I've got, I've got a guard over my heart. I've got a guard over my mind. And when I get off into the wrong thing, see, I can just get right back into it. I'll just start thinking about what's true. This is, this is huge now. Catch this because the Holy Spirit, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. He's this called the spirit of truth. Jesus called him that re repeatedly, the spirit of truth. And he says the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. So what happens? Something is spoken about you. You're facing a situation. You're looking at something and you think, man, this, this, looks, this looks pretty bad. But is it true? Is it true or is this true? See, I'm talking about you're facing something that's contrary to the word of God. Looks like I'm not going to have the finances to pay the bills. What am I going to do? Is that true? Well, let me see. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches. Looks like I'm facing a pretty bad health situation. What am I going to Wait, is that true? Oh, the Lord is, the Lord is my healer. By his stripes, I was healed. I was, oh, I was healed. If I was healed, I am healed. Amen. See, is it true? How do you know truth? You only know truth because the spirit of truth is going to tell you what's true. So you get your mind off of what's false and get your mind on what's true. Listen, if I get somebody, if I'm watching something on the news, I don't do that too often. But if I'm watching something on the news and they tell me something, you know what? The first thing I want to do now, I want to find out, is that true? Most of the time it's not. So if it's not, what am I going to do with it? Right? Throw it out. Get rid of it. It's not true. Get your mind on what's true. Most of the time you get worried about stuff that's not true. You're getting anxious because you're thinking about things that aren't true. Somebody told you, oh, listen, somebody told you something about somebody and what they said about you. And it's probably not true. So quit worrying about it. Get your mind off of that stuff and change your attitude. Are you with me? You can stand up with me. Listen, our attitudes, our, our attitude of thanksgiving is what opens the door for everything you need from God. And sometimes you might be facing a need and you say, why, Lord, I've been praying, I've been doing what I'm supposed to do, but you got to start, you got to start giving some thanks in that situation. Listen, remember the 10 lepers, 10 of them came. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. 10 of them left. As they were going, 10 of them were healed. How many of them came back? One of them came back. He said, look, Jesus, I'm healed. And he got down on his knees and began to thank him. And Jesus said, weren't there 10 of you? What happened to the other nine? He expected 10 of them to return and give him thanks. But Jesus said to the one, he said, your faith has made you whole. He was made whole. The other ones, maybe they got healed. He was made whole. Your thanksgiving is what opens the door. Listen, has God done something for your, for your life? Has he done something for you? Give him some thanks. Sometimes you're not seeing the fullness of what you need to see because you haven't been giving him thanks. I'm not trying to beat you up with this. I'm trying to encourage you. In this season of Thanksgiving, make sure you're giving thanks to the right person. Don't you get caught up. I'm actually a little bit thankful this year. I think they're not opening some of the stores for Black Friday. You got to do it all online. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because listen, we've, they, they've tried to destroy this holiday and make it just a precursor to Christmas. Let's all go get our shopping done. No, this is, this is a time of Thanksgiving. It should always be a time of thanks, but this is this is Thanksgiving time. Give him some thanks. We're going to do something right now. We're going to sing for a moment. I want you this morning, 
as we worship, I want you to rejoice. I want you to release some stuff. If there's something in your life that's been, it's been like weighing on you, I want you to release it this morning with some joy as we sing this. Can you do that? I want you, as we sing, I want you to think about some things that Lord, the Lord's done for you. Don't focus on what you might be, the problems you're facing. I want you to focus on what God has done for you. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it ministered to your spirit today. And uh, let me tell you, if you want to see more videos from us, be sure to hit the like button or the subscribe button. And uh, also we're live every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Hope that you can join us. Hey, keep living the abundant life that Jesus called you to live. God bless.